we have come to the Hakone Castle, which is one of four national treasure castles in the whole of Japan. So I've just been inside and had a little look around, but take a look at it from the outside. <laughs> Hikoni Castle was built to be one of the most protected fortresses in the world with all kinds of tricks to protect it from intruders. The main one being that it was built high up on a hill and surrounded by a moat. And just over the road you can relax in the traditional Japanese tea garden. The cuisine in Shiga is a huge reason to visit. It's said that this is the birthplace of sushi with their famous funazushi dish. This can only be made from the fish in Japan's biggest lake, Lake Biwa. Omi beef is a big deal here and it's said to be even better than the more famous Kobe beef but they're kind of keeping it on the quiet. I tried Omi beef in every form at the Morishima restaurant, it was lush. And you have to eat in a ryokan while you're in Shiga, it's such an experience. All those little dishes, so many traditions. We're in our hotel for dinner tonight and we've got a duck hot pot. <laughs> The waterways in Shiga are famous. It's how they used to transport all the merchants' goodies back in the day. Join a water canal tour to learn more about the rich merchant history here. <laughs> in the nearby Shinmachi Street, you'll find many traditional Edo-style houses, still there from the Edo period. This area is used in many Japanese films and TV shows. We have come to check out this ninja's house and apparently back in the day ninjas would disguise themselves as farmers so this is known as the farmer's house but really it's ninjas that live inside. This part of the house was made to only be a metre high so that you can't swing a sword around easily or a metre and 78 so I'm just like trying to cram in. There's lots of like little tricks and rope ladders and revolving doors and all sorts of ways for the ninjas to escape if they should be attacked here. I'm in a room full of ninja weapons used from back in the day till now and this is my favourite one, it's called a Wok is a, wok is a Shite Poo Wok is a Shite Poo? Something like that um, It's a little sword at first glance but it's actually a gun and it's so small you can just carry it around with you so it's lethal to the opposition I know this is a ryokan so I thought there might be a duvet somewhere that I put on the floor and set out my bed but I can't actually find one so I'm a bit embarrassed that I can't work out where I sleep tonight. arrived at the first temple of my trip and it is the Yokawa Judo. Unfortunately there's no photography in there so I couldn't show you inside but I just went in and basically around the edges there was lots of little statues and once you've made a 25,000 yen donation you get to have a little statue. Uh, in the middle is all the shrine area so we wandered around and then I knelt next to my guides while I bladed a prayer. Each statue has a different prayer and what it looked like from an outsider's point of view was you pick up a little bit of incense and then you put it over there and then you put some money in and then you do your prayer and nod and leave um, but obviously every little movement has got loads of meaning behind it. We are currently 848 meters above sea level and at one of the highest points in Shiga we've come to check out this temple and we're going to go and do a little zen meditation experience. Purify our hands, I do like this. Left hand, right hand, and make a cup. Don't drink. Okay. And left hand again. And finally, we purify the humble part. And we put it back, like this. We are at the Enrikuji Temple Complex and there are lots of here to check out. Enrikuji is one of the most important monasteries in Japanese history. It was founded in 788 and there are 3,000 temples to see. There is also this stone which is a promise from the leaders of the world religions for world peace. Peace sign, yeah, we're going to see
one of the things to bear in mind if you're traveling to Japan is that a lot of shrines are upstairs they're at high points and so you've really got to work for the views we have come to the ancient village of Sagahara and we're having a little look around at all the temples and shrines um, it's a beautiful day today blue skies making up for the rain yesterday It's an agricultural area here, so all the vegetable patches are covered in electric wires to stop the monkeys and boars in the area because the boars have actually ruined the bamboo forest at the top, or they're well on their way to. So it's a fine balance between looking after the animals and looking after your vegetables here. A hundred families live here and they keep it at a hundred. So if anyone has a child, the oldest one's allowed to stay and the rest have to leave. This is a shooting place for the Japanese comic film, Tora-san. <laughs> Sagora is also where you can pick up the ferry to travel across Lake Biwa to Jakubu Island. <laughs> Two uh, plates and uh, uh, on one plate you will write down your name and the other one uh, you will write down your wish. So you need to go through the centre. Horijozu is where you'll find some of the cleanest water in Japan, thanks to the families that have the koi sheds in the back of their garden, which I never quite understood, but hopefully you will if you visit. We have come to see where the famous Matsuo Hana sake is brewed, and it is in this building here. Sake is indispensable in Japanese culture, so it's a pretty important job here. The way to make the best sake is with the purest water, so this is the perfect brewing ground to make the sake and I hope we're going to go and try some in a minute. <sighs> Smells oh. good. <laughs> sake number four. We have the premium one first so it's quite hard to go downhill from there. I hope you've enjoyed my tour around Shiga. Check out my blog at vickyflipfloptravels.com for a four-day guide to Shiga. And if you like what you've seen, subscribe for more.